my students. Uh, this is the fifth lecture during the COVID-19 uh, holidays. Uh, this lecture deals with chapter seven, titled Continuous Probability Distribution. Uh, first, I will remember you that I canceled uh, the hypergeometric distribution. Don't forget that, because it's so difficult to explain uh, this distribution far away of my students. So I canceled the hypergeometric distribution. Now, uh, in the preceding chapters, we explained some discrete probability distribution, like binomial and Poisson. And again, I cancelled the hypergeometric distribution. In this chapter, we will discuss the continuous random variables and their probability distribution. Specifically, we will study one type of continuous probability distribution here, which called the number uh, the normal probability distribution. In the next chapters, we will discuss the uniform uh, distribution, and we also will cancel the exponential distributions as we canceled the uh, hypergeometric distribution. Okay, so. Uh, according to continuous probability distribution, we will study the normal distribution and the uniform distribution. And we will cancel the exponential distribution as we cancel the hypergeometric distribution. Okay? The basic difference between discrete and continuous random variable the meaning of probability function for a discrete random variable the probability function gives the probability that the random variable assumes a specific value a specific value okay where the continuous provides the probability density function which does not directly give probabilities but the area under the curve of the function related to a given interval, a given interval, not a point, okay, does provide the probability that the continuous random variable assumes any value within this interval, okay? So this is the difference between the continuous random variable and the discrete random variable. Okay, we can compute any probability for the discrete uh, uh, random variable at any point, at any point, okay, but we cannot do that in the continuous random variable, uh, okay, so in the continuous random variable, we can compute the probability as the area under the distribution, the area under the curve, between two points, not at one point, between two points. These two points called the interval, the interval between x1 and x2 or z1 and z2 and so on. So here the probability of a continuous random variable is calculated as the area under the distribution within an interval, within an interval not at a specific point, okay? This is the main difference between continuous random variable and discrete random variable. We define a continuous random variable as a variable that can assume any value in one or more intervals, in one or more intervals. The possible value that a continuous random variable can assume are infinite and uncountable, uncountable. 
So the possible value for discrete are countable value, but with continuous random variable, the, va the values <coughs> are uncountable, uncountable, okay? Again, uncountable. It's infinite number of values, infinite number of values, okay? For example, the variable that represents the time taken by a student from home to his college is a continuous random variable. Suppose 15 minutes is the minimum time and 60 minutes is the maximum time taken by all students to commute from home to college, okay? So the time taken uh, between home and college is between 15 and 60 minutes, okay? Let x be a continuous random variable that denotes the time taken to uh, commute from home to college by a randomly selected student. Then x can assume any value in the interval uh, uh, 15 to 60 minutes. This is an interval of time, okay? This interval contains an infinite number of values that are uncountable, okay? So the value between 15 minutes and 60 minutes are infinite number, infinite number. And it's uncountable. You cannot count uh, the number of values between uh, uh, the minimum of 15 and the maximum of 60 minutes or any other interval, okay? Continuous probability distribution. We defined a continuous random variable as a random variable whose values are not countable as we said before. A continuous random variable can assume any value over or during an interval or some intervals, as we explained. Because the number of values contained in any interval is infinite, the possible number of values that the continuous random variable can assume is also infinite. Moreover, we cannot count these values. We cannot count these values, okay? The life of a battery, the heights of students, the time taken to go to your faculty, the amount of oil in a gallon, weights of students, prices of home are all examples of continuous random variable. Note that although money can be counted, all variables involving money usually are considered to be continuous random variables, okay? This is so because the variable involving the money often has a very large number of values. Now, suppose that 100 students are enrolled at the Faculty of Commerce and X is the continuous random variable that represents the heights of those students, the heights of the 100 students, okay? The following table lists the frequency and the relative frequency distribution of X. Okay? This is the class, class of out, beginning with the first class as between 130 centimeter to 140 centimeter. So the lengths of every class here equal 10 
centimeters. Okay, so this is the first class, the second class, and this is the last one. The last one is the class uh, which contains the heights between 180 centimeters to 190 centimeters. Okay, so frequencies or F. in every class or in each class like this and the total frequency is equal 100 okay the relative frequency computed by dividing every frequency by 100 okay this is relative frequencies the total of relative frequencies must equal one one or 100 percent okay the relative frequency given in the above table can be used as the probabilities of respective classes. So this relative frequency represents the probability. For example, the probability that a height of one student, a height of one student is between 130 and 140 centimeter this probability equal 2% 2% and uh, the probability that a selected or randomly selected students height is between 106 and 170 is equal 15% and so on okay The following figures display the histogram and the polygon for the relative frequency distribution of the above table using MATLAB functions. Bar, blot, ingest, uh, X label, Y label, and title. Okay. X. This is uh, the midpoint of every class. The first midpoint or the center of the first class is 135 uh, and the center of the last class is 185. This is the midpoint of the last class and this is the midpoint of the first class. Okay? Why the probability or the relative the relative frequency? Okay? the relative frequency bar means bar graph bar graph x and y and one y one y one huh? to link the bars or the rectangles to each other okay so when uh, writing one beside x and y we mean there is no gap between the rectangles, between the bars, okay? And G means green color, green colors, okay? So this command <coughs> I will draw a bar chart, but the bars are linked to each other or uh, adjacent to each other, okay? Hold on, x1 equal uh, x plus 125, this is uh, an added center before the first center of the first class, okay? So in order to draw a polygon, we have to add one class before and one class after the centers of all classes uh, displayed in the frequency table, right? So x1 equal all centers uh, given in x plus one center before the first class and one center after 
the last class okay but this way we have to get y1 okay which equal uh, y y is the probabilities corresponds to the centers or the classes okay and we have to add one probability before the first and one probability after the first okay but this probability equal zero and the last one also equals why because the frequency equals zero we add uh, one class with frequency equal zero and also we add one class after all classes with probability or with frequency equal zero okay plot x1 and y1 to get the polygon to get the polygon okay so to get the histogram we graph a bar chart and to get a polygon we draw uh, uh, x1 and y1 after adding uh, the two classes before and after the classes contains and the frequency table right so hold off to uh, end the uh, graph to end the graph so hold on and hold off to add uh, something to a graph this is the histogram the green light the green color represents the histogram and the dashed or dot dashed dot dashed line represent the polygon okay so here we add class after the last class and also we add the class before the first class okay the smallest polygon is an approximation of the probability distribution curve of the continuous random variable x the smoothed okay so smooth the polygon means uh, uh, draw a curve by hand not by a ruler not the straight lines by hand smoothed okay now that each class in the table has a width equal to 10 centimeters if the width of classes is changed we first obtain the relative frequency densities and then graph these relative frequency densities okay Now, the probability distribution of a continuous random variable possesses the following two characteristics. The following two characteristics. As we did with the discrete probability distribution, now, more or less, the two basic probabilities, the two basic uh, characteristics are the same, okay? So the probability that X assume a value in any interval lies in the range 0 to 1, okay? So that's mean that any probability is equal a fraction between 0 and 1. But the difference here is that a value in any interval, not a value like the discrete, in any interval, during any interval, lie 
in an interval, okay? Number two, the total probability of all the mutually exclusive intervals within which can assume equal one, okay? So the summation of all probabilities under the curve of the probability distribution equal one, okay? So these two characteristics are looks like the two characteristics or the two conditions of the discrete probability distribution as we explained before. The first characteristic states that the area under the probability distribution curve of a continuous random variable between any two points, any two points, or any interval is between 0 and 1. The second characteristic indicates that the total area under the probability distribution curve of a continuous random variable is always 1 or 100 percent, okay? Okay, look at uh, this figure. The area under the curve of continuous probability distribution equal 1, equal 1 or 100 percent. The area under the curve between any two points or during an interval from A to B equal a fraction between 0 and 1. Between 0 and 1. Okay? The probability that a continuous random variable x assumes a value within a certain interval is given by the area under the curve between the two limits of the interval. Okay, so the shaded area between x equal a and x equal 2 represents the probability that the random variable or the continuous random variable uh, lie between a and b lie between A and B, right? This area denoted by P of X equal to or greater than A and equal to or less than B, this is the shaded area. So this area represents the probability of X where x is equal to and greater than a and at the same time equal to or less than b okay for a continuous probability distribution the probability was always calculated for an interval the probability that a continuous random variable x assumes a single value is always zero okay why always zero Single value means the probability that a random variable equal A. A is a line. A is a line, not interval. So the area under the line equals zero. So the probability that X assume any value, any value equals zero. But it's better to say that X lie between A and B, not equal A and not equal B, okay? So we can say that the probability of A means the probability that X equal A equal zero and also the probability of B or X equal B equal zero okay from this we can deduce we can conclude that for a continuous random variable px equal to or greater than a and equal to or less than b equal p of x larger than a and smaller than b the same 
they are the same. Why? Because B of A equals zero and B of B equals zero. Okay? So the two probabilities are the same. Are the same. In other words, the probability that X assumes a value in the interval A to B is the same whether or not the values A and B are included in the interval, okay? So, <coughs> for example, for the example on, uh, on the height of students, for the example of, of Newton, for the example of the height of students, the probability that randomly selected student is between <coughs> 160 centimeter and uh, 165 centimeter tall is the same as the probability that this student is from. Okay, so here between and here from they are the same okay from 160 to 165 this is showing the probability uh, that uh, uh, p of x greater than or equal to 160 and uh, less than or equal to 165 is the same as P of X greater than 160 and less than 165, okay? <coughs> now that the interval between 160 and 165 represents huh, X is greater than 160 and less than 165. The interval from 160 to 165, okay? Represents or as the same as uh, x equal to or greater than 160 and less than or equal to 165 and it does include 160 and 165 okay so this probability looks like this probability however uh, the mentioned previously uh, as mentioned previously, in the case of continuous probability variable, both of those intervals contain the same probability area under the curve, okay? Uh, uh, the first type of uh, continuous probability distribution is called the normal distribution. This normal distribution sometimes called bill-shaped <coughs> distribution or symmetric distribution. Okay, so the normal distribution is symmetric, symmetric distribution, and has some characteristics as we, as we will see later, right? The normal distribution is one of many probability distributions that a continuous random variable can possess. The normal distribution is the most important and the most widely used of all continuous probability distributions. A large number of phenomena in the real world are normally distributed either exactly or approximately. The continuous random variable representing heights and weights of people, scores of, or marks on an examination, weights of packages of ca or cans, amount of milk or oil in a gallon, life of an item such as battery or television set, and time taken to complete a certain job have all been observed to have an approximate normal distribution. Okay? So all these examples represent a normal distribution. <coughs> <coughs> the 
the normal probability distribution or the normal care is a bill shape, bill shape, as you see, this tail looks like this tail, okay? It's called symmetric, symmetric curve. And this symmetric curve, you will see that mean equal median equal mode. And the mean denoted by mu. Okay? So as we know, from second year principles of statistics, uh, in case of the normal distribution, all the three measures of central tendency uh, which are median, mean, and the mode are equals, are equals, okay? A continuous random variable x that has a normal distribution is called a normal random variable. Note that not all bill shaped curves represent a normal continuous uh, a normal distribution or a normal continuous distribution curve okay only specific type of bell shaped curve represents a normal curve okay so the normal probability distribution when plotted gives a bell shaped curve such that such that the total area under the curve equal 1, the curve is symmetric around the mean, the two tails of the curve extend to infinity, to infinity. So here the curve not touch, not touch x-axis, here this extend to minus infinity and this one extended to positive infinity, okay? A normal distribution possesses the following three characteristics. The total area under the normal distribution equal one. A normal distribution curve is symmetric around the mean as shown in the presenting figure. Consequently, 50% of the total area under the normal distribution curve lies on the left side of the mean and also 50% lies on the right side of the mean. The tails of the normal distribution curve extend indefinitely in both directions without touching or crossing the horizontal axis, I mean the x-axis. Okay. Although a normal distribution curve never meets the horizontal axis beyond the points represented by mu minus 3 sigma and the mu plus 3 sigma. This is according to uh, the empirical rule. We studied the empirical rule in the second year, okay? And we will uh, take an idea about the empirical rule later here. It becomes so close to this axis that the area under the curve beyond these points in both directions can be taken as virtually zero according to the empirical rule, okay? So the area under the curve after, huh, after mu plus three sigma or before mu minus three sigma you can concern this area to be zero, to be zero. So 
for the mean and the standard deviation uh, mu and sigma are the parameters of the normal distribution. Given the value of these two parameters, we can find the area under a normal distribution curve for any interval. Remember, there is not just one normal distribution curve, but a family of normal distribution curves. Okay? Each different set of values of mu and sigma <coughs> gives a different normal distribution. The value of mu determines the center of a normal distribution curve on the horizontal axis and the value of sigma gives the spread or dispersion of the normal distribution curve. The following three normal distribution curves drawn in the right figure have the same mean but different standard deviation. By contrast, the three normal distribution curves in the left figure have different means but the same standard deviation. Look at this three normal distribution here. The shape of the three normal distribution are the same, but the mean is different. Here the mean equal 10, here the mean equal 20, here the mean equal 30. The standard deviation are the same. Standard deviation represents the spread, the spread, huh? the spread of the distribution. They are similar according to sigma, okay? But in this figure, we see that the mean is the same for the three normal distribution. The mean equal 100 for the three normal distribution. But sigma is different. Sigma is different. Here sigma equal 5. Here sigma equal 10. And here sigma equal 15. Okay? Like the binomial and the Poisson distributions explained before, the normal distribution can also be expressed by a mathematical equation. However, we will not use <coughs> this equation to find the area under the normal distribution curve. Instead, we will use table one of appendix, the standard normal distribution. The standard normal distribution is a special case of the normal distribution, okay? Special case, why? Because the mean of the standard normal distribution equals zero, and the standard deviation of the standard normal distribution equals one, okay? So the standard normal distribution is a normal distribution with mean equal zero, and with the standard deviation equal one. So the two parameters, of this distribution are 0 and 1. The two parameters of the standard normal distribution are 0 and 1. Okay? The following figure displays the standard normal distribution curve. The random variable that possesses a standard normal distribution is denoted by Z or Zeta, okay? So, the units of the standard normal distribution curve are denoted by Z or sometimes pronounced as Zeta, okay? And are called the Z values or uh, Z scores. 
they also called standard units or standard scores okay a specific value of z gives the distance between the mean and the point represented by z in terms of the standard deviation in terms of standard deviation So this is the standard normal distribution. The mean value equal zero, and the standard deviation equal one, okay? So from this shape, you will see that the distance from zero to infinity, the area under the curve equal one half, and from zero to minus infinity, the area under distribution equal one half. Remember that all values of zeta here on the left side are negative and all values of zeta in the right side are positive. Okay? The value of zeta in the left side are negative, but the area under distribution are positive. Okay? For example, <coughs> A point with value of zeta equal to, like this, two standard deviation to the right of the mean. Similarly, a point with a value of minus two, this, is two standard deviation to the left of the mean, okay? So here, uh, according to the standard normal, the units to the left of mean are negative, and the units uh, to the right of the mean are positive. The standard normal distribution table List the area under the standard normal curve to the left of zeta values from minus 3.49 to plus 3.49. Okay, so the last two values here under the normal distribution, the standard normal is uh, minus 3.49. Five, approximately, here on this side, and three point five here. Okay, three point five here. So the table contains all values between minus three point five and the plus three point five. Any other value uh, outside this interval? you can concern the area under distribution equal one between those two limits the area equal one so any outside point the area will be zero will be zero okay table one gives what's called the cumulative probability to the left of any z value, cumulative probability to the left of any z value, okay? Although the value of z on the left side of the mean are negative, the area under the curve is always positive. The area under the standard normal curve between any two points can be interpreted interpreted okay 
as the probability that z assumes a value within that interval. The function norm spec. This means normal density plot between specifications. Syntax, norm spec spaces. Spaces means the limits, limits. Minimum and the maximum or two points, okay? Norm spec mu and sigma, if uh, the standard normal distribution, you know that mu equals zero and sigma equal one. So you can <coughs> omit mu and sigma if we deal with the standard normal distribution because it's given that uh, in the standard normal distribution mu equals zero and sigma equal one. If we deal with any other distribution, you have to write mu and the sigma, okay? So if dealing with <coughs> standard normal, you can omit mu and sigma, and that's enough to uh, to define the interval, the interval here, okay? But for any other distribution, you have to write mu and sigma. Spaces mu sigma region, region here, uh, means inside the spaces or outside the spaces. Inside or outside, right? P equal norm spec, any of the three commands, okay? We'll give you, in addition to uh, the figure, we'll give you the probability itself, okay? <coughs> Example, find the area under the standard normal curve between 0 and 1.65. By hand, using the table, we divide the given number, 100.65. 65 into two portions okay this is the first one 1 1.6 1 1.6 okay the digit before the decimal point and one digit only after the decimal point okay the second part is 0 0.04 0 0.04 okay uh, so, sorry, point oh five. Okay. The second digit after the decimal point. Note that to find the required area under the standard normal curve, we locate one point six in the column for Z on the left side of table one and. 0 0.05 in the row for z at the top of this table, okay? So now, assuming that this is a table of zeta, okay? The first column here, the first column here represents uh, the value of zeta and the one point of decimal points, one point, okay, and the row, the first row contains, contains the points of decimal from point one to point nine, to point nine, okay, so you have to divide the decimal points after the integers of zeta, the decimal points, into two, two parts. One part, which is the first point, and the second part, which is the second decimal point, right? The entry with the row for 1.6, and 
the column four point o five intersect gives us the area under the standard normal curve to the left of zeta equal one point sixty five the entry where the row for 1.6 and the column for 0.05 cross is 0.95 consequently the area under the standard normal curve between 0 and uh, 1.65 is p z between 0 and 1.65 equal 0.95 minus 0.5 equal 0.45 okay look at this figure now he said here equal 1.65 okay from table 1, the area under distribution from minus infinity to 1.65 equal 0.95. The area under distribution according to the table of zeta. Okay? So, all this area equal point 59 and the area between mu equals 0 and the minus infinity equal one half one half okay so the area between z equal 0 and z equal 165 equal 0.95 minus 0.5 okay this area from minus infinity to this point minus this area from minus infinity to the median or to the average here okay so the shaded area equal the difference between z equal 1.65 and z equal zero right by MATLAB using the function norm spec now because we deal with the normal uh, the standard normal so mu equal zero and s equal one s is the standard division so you can put spaces spaces the two limits of the interval or the area zero this is the minimum or the first limit and the second limit and you can write mu and sigma or omit mu and sigma because by default norm spec calculates the probability and the draw the shape for the standard normal distribution where you write mu and sigma or don't write mu and sigma okay so this is the probability equal 0.45 and this is uh, the shape of the normal distribution and the shaded or colored area represents the probability here the probability is 0.45 the probability between the two limits where z equal 0 and z equal 1.65 okay another example find the area under the standard normal dis distribution or the standard normal curve number a to the right of z equal 1.62 to the right okay 
So more than, more than this point, or greater than this point, okay? The area greater than this point. Number B, the lift of Z equal minus 1.41. So the area to the left of Z in uh, the left side, okay? By hand, using the table of Z score, we have this is the first area, okay? The first area, the shaded area here. Okay, because the area from this point to minus infinity, huh? denoted by the area under distribution from table and because you know that the area under the curve as a whole equal one so you can get the area uh, the shaded area by subtracting the area to the left of 1.62 from one from one okay so this will be the shaded area, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. But the same way, the area to the left of minus 1.41 is the area extracted from the table directly, directly, which is 0 0.079. So BZ greater than 1.62, this shaded area, equal 1 minus the area under the curve extracted from the table. And the area to the left of minus 1.41, this area, is extracted directly from the table okay one zero uh, when z equal minus one point four under the value of one percent under the value of one percent okay by MATLAB here non respect From 162 to infinity, this is the maximum limit, infinity, because we need to compute the area greater than Z equal 0.62, greater than, not less than. So beginning with Z equal point, uh, 1.62 to infinity, to positive infinity, and you can uh, write mu and sigma or without mu and sigma so you can write mu and sigma if you deal with any other normal distribution uh, other than the standard normal distribution okay so this is the first area of the first probability for the second probability the first limit is minus infinity because we deal with the left side and the other limit is minus 1.41 okay and you can write mu and sigma or you can omit mu and sigma so this is uh, the second figure the first figure sorry which the probability equal 0 0.05 and this is the second figure with the probability equal 0 uh, 7 or 0 0.07 okay
Example 3. The standard normal, using the standard normal distribution, compute the following probabilities. Okay? So, by the same way, you can get the area under distribution between z equal 1.4 1 and 1.62 and the, by the same way z between minus 1.65 and 1.90 and z greater than minus 1.41 uh, okay look at this and look at this okay here, the area to the left of 1.41, this, the area to the right of 1. So, this one is the complement probability from here to here. So, it's equal 1 minus this area, 1 minus this area, okay? So the first probability, z greater than 1.41 and less than 1.62 equal bz less than or to the left of 1.62 minus the probability that z is less than 1.41, okay? and so on for well, this probability and this probability by MATLAB put the two limits between square brackets and write or omit 0 and 1 the parameters of the normal distribution ok ok the shaded area here, the second area, the third area. The empirical rule, we will stop here at the empirical rule. Listen, the empirical rule is explained in second year. You have to review the empirical rule and uh, I will explain it in the next uh, lecture. Goodwin, and see you later. Thanks a lot.